everybody welcome to day 26 of june vlogs it's wednesday today we have had sleep we are refreshed we are bright eyed and bushy tailed <laughs> um you've been attacked i didn't see that i'll look at that when i um no <laughs> so today we have just got a mass of photos to take so that is the main job for, you can put my coffee down, you can tell I've been for a coffee. Put it down, you're not having that. Goodness. Yeah, it's just a mass of photos to take today. So I am just making myself a toasted tea cake. Get off my coffee. Um, toasted tea cakes are, for those of you not in the UK, fruity tea cakes. Put them in the toaster, hopefully. Hence of toasted tea cake. Yeah, but if you're not in the UK, you might not know. You might not have them. So I'm going to do that. Have my toasted tea cakes. Oh, have my coffee. Yeah, and then what? we're going to start on photos. So I'll be back. I haven't started on photos yet. Um, we're going to do it after lunch. But I did want to tell you, I finished the joinery top last night. Oh, do you know what? I didn't go to sleep until 10 o'clock. I just, I was so tired, I'd gone past tired, past exhausted, into some kind of crazy, and I did not go to sleep till 10 o'clock. So anyway, I finished my joinery top, and this is how much yarn I had left. How close was that? I was messaging uh, my friend Anne last night from Toby Knits, and we were chatting, and I was saying, I'm going to run out of yarn, I'm going to run out of yarn, there's no way. I think at that the time I was messaging Anne... I had 16 or 18 rows or something to go and I said I'm going to run out, I'm going to run out anyway. That is how much I have left, which is not a lot. There's both ends. I do have more of the grey left, which is there. But yeah, that's how much I had left from the um, purple. But it's on the line, so I am going to show you my crazy blocking process. When it comes to garments, and I know a lot of you are going to be going, no, I will not pin a garment out. I will for a shawl, um, but I won't pin a garment out. This is why I make a lot in acrylic, because they're very easy to, to care for. I do not have the time or the space to be pinning a garment out, so it has to fit. Um... It's, I will never stretch a garment out or anything like that. So I don't want to, it to be a case of every time I wash it, it's going to need pinning out. I do have a top like that, which is the Rocket T. Um, and it has to be pinned and stretched out every time it's been washed. And I don't have the time or the space to do it. So I very rarely wear it for that reason. So after I made that, I decided that a garment has to be easy wash. I, I'll i either, if it's in the winter, I'll wash it and then just lay it over the radiator. And I know a lot of you are screaming at me, but it has to be easy care. Or a, acrylic jumpers, as long as they're not too heavy, I'll just hang them up and they're fine. But acrylic, you know, it's fine to do that with acrylic. I'm not, I'm not telling anybody to do that. I've had people comment in the past going, no, you must not do that. It is how I do it. So bear that in mind when I show you this. Are you ready? Here we go. So this was something brilliant that was bought for me a couple of years ago. Um, what is that on there? I don't know what that was. And if it's anything that has to lay flat to dry like this, my penguono goes on here. I do it like this. And that is how I do it. But it's drying. It's got dog hair on it. Look at the dog hair. I bet you can't see it on the camera. There. So, yeah, it's um, drying outside. I think we've got another warm day today, so it should dry. There's no sun out yet, but it's only 11 o'clock in the morning, so there's not going to be. Um... I just need to nip to the chemist. Josh needs some bond gel and he's got a, a mouth ulcer, so I'm going to go do that. But then we're going to get on with pictures. Well, after lunch. Just walking the dog before it gets too hot to take her. It's going to get really hot this afternoon. I 
20, well, I'm saying really hot, maybe not for those of you in other countries, but for us in the UK, um, 26, 28 degrees this afternoon, so I don't want to bring her out later. So we're having a walk now. Luckily, it's really handy in the village because all the shops have water bowls outside for the dog, so she can have a drink every sort of six foot. Um, so I'm just going to take her through the park. It's quite shaded in the park as well. So she'll be fine in there. <clears throat> and then next month we've got the summer festival coming. I'll try and get some vlog content of the summer festival. It's been around to the top. The what? The I'll show you where we are. That's our war memorial. Danny and I. That's our favourite pub, that one. This is the park, just down here. You've seen it all before. And the dog is there. <laughs> she's panting, but she's just had a drink. If we go down that way, we can take over that gym. Pokemon. You've got to combine the two, haven't you? This, I'll show you around here. This is a little, you can walk all the way around here. I'm coming back all the way around. Look at all the flowers, don't they work hard? It's beautiful. All the way around. And these are all. Aren't they gorgeous? That says, the gift of caring. Look at that one, that's a good one, isn't it? I think Danny's behind me. I've lost him round the round. It's called the roundhouse. He's gone the other way now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know where Danny's gone. Oh, there he is. <laughs> what? Oh, you, you, right, okay. Right, Pokemon card. I'm going to show you this. Hang on. How pretty is that? beautiful isn't it look isn't it gorgeous love this one I'm not very good with names of flowers but I do appreciate them isn't it gorgeous it's great for the bees as well so pretty the plain bowls over there there we go I've put your low down so you can see what it looks like on, but I will give you a, a close-up just now. And there we go. Oh, isn't it gorgeous? Just look at that detail and the drape. It's just, it's absolutely lovely. So I think I got the length where I wanted it and it hasn't when I was blocking it, it went really wide, so I was a little bit worried, but it seemed to have shrink, shrinked back down. I'll give you, you can see the back. I'm so pleased with it. I've got changed just so I can show you to the full effect. Um, isn't it gorgeous? This is how I would wear it with a black vest top underneath and my black jeans. This is how I would wear it. But isn't it beautiful? I'm so, so pleased with it. I really am. So, I need to take some pictures for Ravelry. But yeah, just look how gorgeous. That is just joining. It's not a cable. Oh, I'm so pleased with it. I was really unsure because you decide yourself where you want your arm holes by just seaming up there. I think I've got that right. So yeah, it's just going to be a top that I wear and boiling because I've got long jeans on now. In the summer, I live in shorts and dresses. Um, it's just going to be a top that I wear. Like tomorrow, it's only 18 degrees, so I'll probably wear it tomorrow. Hello, everybody. It's four o'clock. I'm going to end the vlog now before um, I do tea. So I'm not really doing anything for the rest of the day. Um, 
I'm not even having tea yet. We're going to have it in about a couple of hours or so. We're going to have a spaghetti bolognese tonight, but it's very warm outside. So I don't know if we'll fancy it at six o'clock or maybe I'll have to wait till seven. I don't know. So I've not cast on another project. Um, I don't really want to at the moment because I want to work on my cross stitch. You haven't seen it for ages. Um, this is my cross stitch. So I've done a fair amount. Cross stitch clearly takes me a little bit longer just because I haven't really been making time to do it. But I am going to now. So this is what it looks like when it's finished. It's a DMC one. Um, and these at the moment, everywhere I've seen, I paid 35 last year for it. And I think they're now 23 for the kits. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm not going to cast on anything else. I say that, but I probably will tomorrow. But I've no plans to cast on anything else because I want to sit and work on my cross stitch and just give it a little bit of time um so i'm just working through this it's been a lovely afternoon it's been nice and quiet we got all the pictures done it did take a while <laughs> it's more so trying to get the right light it is so hard if you do it in direct sunlight the colors look nothing like they do in real life but you kind of need some natural light coming through. I've got a really good spot in front of the window, but not so close to the window where some hits it. And it seems to work well. So that's where I tend to do it. But it is, it is tricky getting the correct light for photos. It really is. But we've got it all done. I'm really pleased with all the yarn that we've done this time. I think there's a nice mix of brights and pastel type yarns, which is what we try and have. I've said before, um, but if any any of you are new, I think you would kind of think Danny would be the person that did all the brights and dark colours. Is not. Danny does all the pastels. Um, not always. Um, he does put some brights together, but is is really good at pastel yarns. So usually. When you see pastels, Danny has done it. There's a beautiful one that he's done. I think I've called it Popsicle. There was only one. And that, yeah, it's a really, really beautiful one. Pictures are going to be on a YouTube community post. I'm not going to fill the vlog with yarn photos. But they're in the Facebook group already. And I'll pop them onto a YouTube community post as well. Um, let me just see where I am on that. Oh, just one. Just one. So that's that one. I must have marked that I've done that one and I haven't. That's that one. I better just pause it while I get this to a right spot. Sorry about that. I didn't want you just to watch me counting. There's nothing worse, is there, if you're trying to count and you, you're watching a video and somebody's counting on the video. <laughs> when years ago, not now, I don't go to the gym now, um, but one of, the, one of my biggest bugbears at the gym used to be when you're counting your reps and somebody was counting out loud. I used to get so frustrated. A couple of times I even said, can you count in your head? <laughs> It used to really annoy me. I find it impossible to count if somebody else is counting. I just can't do it. In fact, the children, not so much now, but when they were younger, when I used to be counting and they used to ask me a question, more so Josh, because he's the cheeky one, um, they used to start counting if they knew I was counting, little monkeys. <laughs> Josh was a monkey for it. <laughs> So, yeah, with no plans for the rest of the evening, I am going to sit and cross-stitch. I've been watching a lot of a new channel. Um, well, I've got a couple of channel recommendations, actually. Um, first of all, we have, who I shared in the Facebook group the other day, 
and I'm going to share hers on the podcast next week as well. I'm going to do a little bit of a, a podcast shout out on my podcast next week. I'll probably film it on Monday, I think. But so the one that I shared in the Facebook group the other day, I think it was last week or the week before, is Sophia and Phil at Knits For You. Oh my word. The channel came up for me as a YouTube recommendation and oh wow, what a fabulous channel. She is lovely and her husband Phil is equally as lovely. Just one of those really happy, down-to-earth couples. The second you, you turn the channel on, you know you're going to love it. Um, she does a lot of knitting and a lot of, sorry, a lot of fundraising. I'm sorry, Sophia, I think I said that wrong. She does a lot of fundraising for Dementia UK. Now, I've not been watching the channel long um, because, obviously, I only found it a week or two back. Let me just mark this row off. One sec. Sorry, everybody. If I don't mark it off straight away, I lose my place. I've not been watching the channel long so I apologize if I make if I give the wrong information um but I believe it's her twin sister who I think has dementia and Sophia raises a lot of money for dementia she's an absolute inspiration she really is but she makes some amazing amazing things and she does a lot of live streams as well there's one coming up early July I want to say the second but that could just be me pulling a date out of thin air, so don't pay any attention to that. She she mentioned it on the last video. Early July, she has um, a live stream coming up. I think it's Tuesday. I think it is the 2nd, because I think it's Tuesday the 2nd of July. I'm sure it is. Well, go over and check out her channel. She's just lovely. She's absolutely lovely. Um, so, yeah, there's first of all Sophia... So that is the Knits For You channel. I will give you a proper shout out on the podcast, Sophia, as well. Um, the other one I wanted to uh, mention was, I've started watching, which is not knitting related or crochet related or any kind of craft related at all. Um, it is Adventure Me. Um, I will link it in the description box below. And he does a lot of um, history type vlogs where he goes round places and looks at the history. So the one I've watched, just watched now is nothing to do with what he normally does. I've just watched the live ghost hunt at Blackpool's Tram Town, which was fantastic. He did a whole live stream, but that's not what he normally does. Um, he does a lot of... I've watched a lot over the weekend. He did one at Camelot Theme Park. And as he's going round, he'll do photo fades. So he'll bring up an old photo. So you'll be looking at the camera from where it is now. And then he'll put the old photo and fade it so you can see exactly how it looks now to how it, look, how it looked then. They are really good. So that was the Camelot one. And then I'd watched one. And I can't remember. Was it the... Lancashire Canal it did one through train tunnels there were three tunnels one was a canal and the other two were um disused train lines and this this tunnel was a mile and a half I can't remember which one it what it was called now it was a mile and a half and he walked through it all and as you were walking through, it also had running parallel a live train line as well. Oh, it was absolutely brilliant. And it was explaining that when the canal boats go through, because they, they can actually go through this tunnel a mile and a half long, but when the canal boats go through, they actually have somebody following along on a path Um it must be on some kind of little vehicle thing, following along on a path just in case the canal boat gets into any kind of difficulties because obviously it's an, a mile and a half long and in a tunnel. They're really, really good. He does an awful lot of 
um, history type videos, the brilliance. So that's another one, Adventure Me. <laughs> there you go, a little bit of a, a podcast shout out for you. I do watch a lot of different podcasts. I don't just watch Knitting and Crochet. I used to do. Um, but YouTube nowadays is filled with so many interesting things. So I do like to watch a, a wide range of podcasts. Well, I'm saying the podcast, they're not the... Um, when these people do these vlog type ones, they don't call them podcasts. What do they call them? I think they just call them a video. I don't know. Right, I've just done that one there. I think it's just called a video. There we go. So, yeah, we're going to have a spaghetti bolognese for tea. I've got some garlic bread. We've got some fresh pasta. Um, so that's going to be nice. We'll have a spaghetti bolognese. I think Josh is working tonight, so he'll be at work. And he usually get either gets something at work or he grabs, I've mentioned before, he grabs something out of the freezer. So it's going to be a pretty relaxed night tonight, I think. And I'm just going to sit and I'm going to cross stitch all night long. <laughs> I think I need my other glasses on really I'm struggling to see in these glasses but when I wear my other glasses I can't watch TV because they're my close-up and if I try and look at the TV everything's blurred so I struggle on without them <laughs> I'm so pleased with that joinery top you know I really really am it's turned out lovely there's not as much positive ease in mine, but then I didn't gauge swatch, so that's to be expected. I'm still very happy with it as it is, and it looked so nice with the black jeans as well. And that was the plan when I chose them colours, thinking I'd be wearing uh, my black skinnies with it. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I'd definitely make another one. It was a really easy pattern. Um, and I would definitely make another one. I'm sorry, I'm not even looking at the camera, am I? That's really rude. I'm so sorry. But yeah, so that's basically it, I think, today. Stuart's asleep over there. The dog is absolutely zonked out after a walk and she's asleep on the floor. Just before we took her out, we knew when she needed to go out because she was really antsy and she was running around a lot. She was going in the garden, she was barking. Um, and she, there's no way we could have taken her out from this point forwards. It's far too warm, it really is. So, bless her. She's had a walk, she's happy. She has, I will say, since she's had a surgery, she's calmed down a lot. Um. If you knew Ruby had emergency surgery at the end of May, she had pyometra, which obviously is an emergency. It's an infection in the womb and it was really, really serious. It was at bursting point when we taken her to the vets. She's absolutely fine now. Um, but what I was going to say was the reason she had never been neutered, there was a reason for it. Um, I've probably talked about this on the channel before. We got Ruby, well, I got Ruby, I wasn't with Danny then, when she was five and a half months old. I never had her from a pup. Well, she was a pup, but a tiny, tiny pup. She was five and a half months old. And I, I had owned a dog in my early 20s, but I wasn't very experienced with dogs at all. And... She came, bless her, with a lot of anxieties. Um, I'm not going to get into the ins and outs of it, but needless to say, she was extremely anxious, extremely frightened. And I went to a, a local dog trainer at first. And normally with a puppy, you cage train and things. And I'd bought a cage thinking that that's what I'd seen on the internet. And she said, absolutely not. Do not put her in a cage. She's far too scared of it. Um, and she was a little bit, she's never been aggressive, but she's always been a dog that can snap a little bit once she gets scared. So the first dog trainer, she was okay, but she didn't really, I feel, help all that much. So I'd gone to the vets and I ended up getting a number for a dog psychologist and he was 
he was the best thing. He really was. He was absolutely fantastic. And he, he knew exactly what had happened with her. And he gave me all the correct information. Um, and he just basically said, you know, you're not going to get rid of her anxieties that she's got. She She's like, she has a lot of separation anxiety um, and a lot of other anxieties around other dogs and other people, especially men. Um, he said, you just need to be careful. Don't be letting people fuss her if you take her for a walk. And, you know, because people always want to fuss a dog. So I always say, please don't. If, you know, if a little child tries to come over and fuss her, she probably wouldn't snap, but I wouldn't take the risk. And it's not only just that, she doesn't like it. So he gave me a lot of really good tips. But the point I'm making is he did say, because I was going to, she was, I think she was booked in for neutering. And he said, just think about it. He said, because usually if you've got a dog that can be a little bit snappy, neutering can actually make the problem so much worse. So I ended up speaking to the vet and the vet said it can happen. If you've got a dog that can be a little bit snappy, it can go the other way and make them worse. So that is the reason Ruby was never, ever neutered. It wasn't because I was planning on breeding or anything like that. It's for that reason only. But as it's turned out, it's turned her <laughs> She's so soft. She's... She's never, as she's got older, she's sort of grown out of her snappiness. It used to be if she was eating, if she got disturbed, if she was in a deep sleep or strangers, that's when she could snap. And she's a pug, you know, she's tiny. Even if she ever snapped, you know, she never hurt you. It's not like having an alsatian that's snappy or anything like that anyway. But now she's gone completely the other way. When she, after she had a surgery, the first thing she did when she came down the next day, because um, we kept her in our room that night, and when we brought her down the next day, she went and found Luigi on the sofa, and she just cuddled up to him, and she's, yeah, she's gone the other way. So <laughs> me and Danny were saying last night, for seven years, we never got a neutered for fear that, because she's seven years old, for fear <laughs> that it could make her more snappy, and it never did, so... <laughs> There you go, a little bit of useless information. Anyway, I've been waffling for 20 minutes, so I am going to go. Have a lovely evening, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow for day 27.